King Charles III celebrated his official birthday with a trooping the color parade, following the almost 300-year tradition, with the meaningful outfits, new royal titles, and by breathing new life into customs. This event truly embodies the epitome of royal pomp and pageantry. The ceremony took place near Buckingham Palace, where 1,400 foot guards and the household cavalry assembled into a grand column to go along the mall to Horse Guards Parade, Whitehall, and back again. They were accompanied by over 400 musicians who marched and played as one. There is His Majesty the King, ahead of a grand colossus of soldiers. For this occasion, Charles III dons the tunic of the Order's Guard of Honour, the Welsh Guards. It was accentuated by the traditional bearskin hat and a blue garter sash. King Charles's uniform featured a touching tribute to his mother, the cipher of Queen Elizabeth II. The king has had ample practice for equestrian procession. He first rode in the Trooping the Colours Parade in 1975. It's almost fifty years, and the Brits were so proud of their king as he doesn't lose skills over time. Still, this year marks the first time that the event is all about Charles. While Trooping the Colour marks the official birthday of the British Sovereign, true royal fans know that Charles's actual birthday falls on November 14th. However, the monarchy has a long-standing tradition of celebrating the Sovereign's birthday in June. It allows to make a grand celebration under the summer's sunny skies. Trooping the Colour also serves as an event which showcases support for the monarch, the technical head of the British Armed Forces. This is why there is always a huge focus on the military. The King honoured this tradition in all its details, but he also breathed new life into a ritual that has lain dormant for nearly three decades. He participated in the parade on horseback. Yes, Queen Elizabeth II, as previous female queens, also took part in the parade herself. However, in the late 1980s, her age required a change. Along with the King, several senior royals participated in the parade. Prince William, for the first time, stepped into the spotlight as the ceremonial head of the Welsh Guards. Princess Anne, ever a pillar of royal tradition, joined the procession as the senior colonel of the household division. However, this year introduced a new royal face to the parade, Prince Edward. The youngest of Charles's siblings rode alongside the king on horseback for the very first time. Interestingly, Princess Catherine was also expected to be part of the military team this year. She took over the position of colonel of the Irish Guards from her husband, Prince William, and she fulfills her colonel's duties on par with everyone else. According to her position, protocol would typically require her to don a full military uniform and participate in the parade on horseback. However, diverging from this, Catherine joined Queen Camilla for a stately carriage ride. The royal women truly captured the public's attention with their outfits. They elegantly highlighted their new roles in the monarchy, Queen Camilla's red silk coat dress took inspiration from the Grenadier Guard's uniform, the regiment in the British Army she heads now. Her outfit included gold bullion embroidery on the collar and gold bullion backslashes. Her Majesty also wore a hat, which is a nod to the bearskin, with a grenade exploding up to a feather plume. The Princess of Wales also subtly acknowledged her role as Colonel of the Irish Guards. Her dress mirrored the colour of the guard's uniform, featuring a military-inspired design at the top. Adding a dash of symbolism, she adorned her outfit with a shamrock brooch. As Ireland's most significant emblem, this plant is also used by the Irish guards as their central symbol. The Prince and Princess of Wales' three children, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, also joined the procession. Prince George was a topic of conversation leading up to the event. He had a special role for the coronation, serving as one of the pages of honour for Charles, so there were assumptions that he could take on some special role in this event as well. However, George just joined his younger siblings on a carriage ride. Like the younger kids, he was not present during the main part of the event in front of Buckingham Palace. As always, the public was charmed by Princess Charlotte. She wore a vintage-style dress with an elegant collar and a bow. The selected colours of her dress 
red and white, were unmistakably a homage to the traditional British shades. Prince George and Prince Louis sported ties in the same patriotic red shades. They also wore matching jackets adorned with gold buttons. Louis appeared more grown-up than ever in such an official outfit. The way he greeted the crowd also impressed the royal fans. Since his playful antics at the coronation, where he amused everyone with his experimental waves and expressive faces, it seems the young prince has mastered the royal protocol of grace. Sharing the carriage ride were Prince Andrew and the Duchess of Edinburgh, Sophie. As expected, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle haven't visited the event. Ever since they stepped back from royal duties in 2020, they rarely show up in official gatherings. Some other royals, such as Princess Eugenie and Princess Beatrice, didn't receive an invite to this year's Trooping the Colour. Even so, the event can by no means be called Chamber. Approximately 8,000 people came to the palace to greet King Charles on his official birthday and watch the parade. This opportunity comes at a price, ranging from five to thirty pounds. The formal proceedings of Trooping the Colour habitually feature a grand salute. As the king and the procession concluded their part, the king's troop orchestrated a 41-gun salute in Green Park, echoing across the city in a spectacular display of honour and tradition. The event came to an end with the appearance of the royal family on the Buckingham Palace balcony. The king and queen, the Wales family with their children, gathered to greet the crowd. Princess Anne with her husband, Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence, Prince Edward and Sophie, Duchess of Edinburgh, also joined them. However, some royal fans noted that the balcony looked empty without the late Queen Elizabeth II. King Charles III's mother was one of the most popular and beloved monarchs in history. Nonetheless, little Prince Louis, as always, succeeded in cheering people up. He even gave his fans a respectful salute. And then, the grand finale, the Royal Air Force fly past. An astonishing display of around 70 aircraft from the Royal Navy, the British Army and the Royal Air Force painted the sky with red, blue and white. This impressive turnout mirrored the number of aircraft that took part in King Charles's coronation, a fitting end to a day of celebration and tradition. Reportedly, after the official part of the celebration, the royal family gathered for lunch. However, there they were already enjoying privacy. Let us know in the comments what is your favourite moment from Trooping the Colour 2023.